So I recently discovered a horror game by YouTuber Veilfisk titled Crypt, where the concept is just wonderful. Torture. Not like saw torture, but like this kind of torture. The game's goal is to escape a crypt by solving a series of puzzles and surviving a creature lurking in the tomb. Originally, the game was released as a bonus only to his Patreons, and he offered a $50 Steam gift card to the first person to complete the game. However, it turns out that the game was unbeatable, which is just absolutely hilarious. Fast forward five months later and it's just been released on Steam for free with an actual achievable ending. He proves it's achievable by showing the achievement, however I'm not exactly sure how much I trust that. He did this because he wants to unlock Steam community items, however Steam requires a creator to create a game with, keyword, a broad player base. I'll be honest, I'll pretty much do anything for anyone who can make me laugh, so I'm making this video to spread some awareness. Make sure to let Steam know that this game has a broad player base. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty much all you need to know. Let's enter the crypt. Before starting, I like to change around my settings so my PC doesn't explode. I don't have the best computer. Luckily for me, however, that seemed to help as there's a hidden setting that must be checked to beat the game, such as can win game. I'm not really sure what all these other ones mean, so let's just enable everything. The game begins by saying, retrieve my prize, bring it to me. The prize is this bag of jewels, however, once you pick it up, the coffin in front of you starts banging. Oh, I hear something. Oh, I don't like that one bit. Oh, it's in here. It's like grandpa's funeral all over again. Luckily for us, the coffin seems pretty contained, at least for now. Up ahead, we see a door requiring four keys. These keys are spread across three different sections of the map, with each section containing a different puzzle to solve. I've named these three puzzles the maze, the cubes, and the bridge. Let's take a look at the bridge. The whole point of this game is to torture, and let me tell you, this was one of the prime puzzles for that. I move so fucking slow, oh my god. We have a total of 18 switches and 15 pillars. Each switch triggers a bridge to form between two pillars. The goal of this challenge is to find the right sequence of lever switches to form a bridge to the other side and find a key. The only issue is this big lighter of a torch we have can only illuminate 5 feet in front of our player. So I basically have to just keep on running back and forth flipping one switch at a time for each path. Uh, I think I finally got it. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I closed this bridge? It was just open! Oh, I can't do this. Maybe if I put something worse on while I'm doing this, it can make it a little bit better. Here, hold on, I have an idea. Hey, we have seat belts and oxygen masks. Things for you to use. This isn't better at all. If we drop to the pit beneath, we can actually find a key basically handed to us. Don't let this ruse you. I'm pretty sure this is just the cheese they place in front of the mouse because the second you pick up the key, Greg emerges from the coffin. Come on. Greg is that monster that they warned us is lurking throughout the game. See, so, so you might be asking, Pixels, why is, why is there five of them? Well, that's the Gregging option we blindly turned on in the beginning. Can't wait to see what Italian voice acting means. It's a me, a Mario. Yeah, yeah, for now, let's just, let's just reset and wait to get the keys. As soon as a Greg touches you, you'll die and have to restart the game. Finally, after about 45 minutes of just smacking switches, I reached the other side of the pit and found our second key. Moving on, the second puzzle is the maze, which is exactly what it sounds like. A giant three-floor backroom-style maze. Just winding corridors that don't seem to look any different from the last. Left, right, left, right, stop. Not only is it hard to figure out where you're going, it's just as frustrating trying to figure out how to get back. Think this is the way out? Nope, no, okay, I, I'm lost, I'm lost. I'd have better luck finding a couch at Ikea. On each floor at the end of a corridor, you'll find a unique symbol. One that we'll use for a third puzzle. But hidden in the middle floor through a crevice in the wall lies our third key. Now onto the cubes, probably the easiest puzzle when you don't let this trickster's shenanigans fool you. We're faced with a tower of three cubes, each containing four symbols. We can see that most of these symbols match the symbols that we found in the maze. See, the bottom floor had this symbol, so you would think the bottom block should be this face. The middle floor had this symbol, okay, the middle block does have that face. Top floor has this symbol, so the top block should have- wait. Where the hell's the symbol? There is no third symbol. Trust me, the third floor is the size of a builder's hut. This symbol is just a ruse. However, a three-lock combination with four possible inputs only has a minimal number of possible solutions. See, we have three sets of four symbols. Using the rule of products, we can multiply four to the power of three and find that there's only 64 possible combinations. The combinations can be tried like butter, and in less than five minutes, you can have this door open just like that. I learned this trick in Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem when I was six. Unless you actually like to enjoy a game, never take time to try and figure out a simple combination lock. 
So we know where all four keys are, but we still have one more collectible left to find in order to escape the crypt. Three Harry Potter books. Floyd's looking for them. Books are randomly placed in either these pots, this pillar, or in different corners of the maze. I'm pretty sure there's always at least two books hidden in the maze, so I need to make the maze a little easier to navigate. I'm a madman, so I drew a map of the entire maze. I slowly went down each corridor of the maze, marking my steps to create this map. Each time I found a book, I would pin the map to make sure to record all the potential spawn points. This allowed me to be able to move throughout the maze with relative ease and always find books whenever needed. Oh! Trust me, I had to reset my game a lot of times. This was pretty much necessary. The keys are found, the books are found, and the game is only about 30% complete. Because now I need to figure out how the hell am I going to get all these keys while avoiding the swarm of Gregs chasing me while I do. Well, after dying a couple of times, I began to notice that the Gregs always spawn at the same point and move to the same locations after the keys are picked up. They begin at the bridge, then move to the maze, then cubes, and once all keys are found, begin to split up and target the player. I drew up a plan to best attack and avoid the Gregs. I would start at the maze, move to the cubes, then finally grab the two keys at the bridge. The plan wasn't terrible, I'll give it that. I was always able to grab all the keys with ease, however, getting back to the locks was basically impossible. Oh, hold, hold on a second, hold on a second, we can talk about this. There was only one stairwell back up, and every time I tried to go back to the main floor, a Greg would stop me, and I'd have to run back down. Because of this, I decided to change up my order. I would start at the maids and quickly run to the bridge. They would all be there, however, they aren't actively tracking me at this state. They're pretty much like a CSGO bot at this point. Wait, have I found the trick? I'm getting, uh, I'm getting flashbacks right now. Typically, they would be down in the bottom of the pit, allowing me to grab the key on the top, and when they would begin to move to the maze, I would grab the key on the bottom. From here, I would try to maneuver my way to the cube, since this was the closest key to the final door. After a few attempts, damn it, and a lot of struggle, Greg, 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 calm down, we can talk about this. Gregs, Gregs, I'm glad you're both Gregs, oh, glad you, whoa, are they multiplying? They're multiplying. I finally made it, and unlocked the door. Oh, another door has been opened. Well, fuck. <laughs> you really thought it would have been that easy? <sighs> Not with this guy. The exit to leave the crypt and beat the game is procedurally generated. Yes, it can be anywhere. I died and I died and I died, and I know what you're saying. Why don't you turn off the Gregonic? Good idea. But that still doesn't solve my problem. As soon as you insert all the keys, Greg will heat seek you like a missile. This man got dog in him. He moves at such great speed that it's almost impossible to even make it to another room without being killed. There was literally no way to outrun him without manipulating the game a little bit. I didn't notice, but our player can move extremely fast, like unworldly fast if you can sprint while moving diagonally. I believe this is because the game has velocity for forward movement and sideways movement. Moving diagonally combines the two velocities and makes us zoom around the game. I pretty much turned myself into Scotty Pippen and this guy into Yao Ming. Alright, this is the run. Step 1, get the keys. You know, I can't say I blame him for wanting to kill me, huh? I did steal probably the only thing of value in this entire tomb. One of your protagonists are villains, though. Mario, for one. A plumber don't got no business being in the Mushroom Kingdom. The man's killed more turtles than plastic. And all keys are acquired. Damn, I forgot about Floyd's books. Book. Final book acquired. Sly Koopa? He's a thief. That's, that's like his whole thing. Alright, go. Go, 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 go. He's right behind me. Oh my god, he is on my ass right now. Oh, whoa, 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 Greg. Greg, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it over there. Rabbids and rabbits go to the moon, they were practically stealing everything. It was still challenging, don't get me wrong, I died plenty of times. But I eventually found the room. Oh wait, is it there? Oh my god, yes! Yes! And escape the crypt. Now, what does this all mean? Is this a symbolism for never giving up? For enduring through the pain for ultimate satisfaction? A lesson in problem solving, and why thinking smarter is better than thinking harder. Nope, I just thought it would be funny to overcomplicate a game meant to be stupid and torture its audience.